This is section 10.3 and today we're going to be talking about cross product, um, which is a little different than dot product, um, but kind of along the same lines. So dot product had us testing um, not only our multiplication, but it was also a test to see if vectors were orthogonal. And so it would mean that we eventually need to talk about orthogonal in 3D space too. So many problems in physics, engineering, math involve finding a vector that is orthogonal to, or to two given vectors already. This is called finding the cross product. So imagine in space that you've already got two vectors. Bear with me because I just have pencils. And here are your two vectors. And they don't touch each other. They're nowhere near each other. Not a big deal. Cross product is going to create a third vector for us that is perpendicular to both of these at the same time. So we're not comparing these two vectors. We're actually going to create this whole third vector that's going to be perpendicular to both of these vectors at one time. So that's what we're making. So the first one says just can you find the cross product? Um, there's a lot of multiplying and subtracting is how you do cross product. So not difficult math, but you do have a lot of things to keep track of. So the way that you do cross product is we're going to set up each vector on top of the other one. And then uh, in most books, it's usually notated with kind of this double bar. Well, actually, it's a single bar. It looks like an absolute value almost. And that's um, just the notation that kind of tells everybody that you're about to do cross product. So in order to find cross product, remember, we are just finding ourselves another vector. And I'm going to make myself a lot of space because i got some writing to do here. So we're making another vector. We're making another x, y, and z so that when I have these two vectors, this one that I'm about to create is going to be orthogonal to both of them at the same time. So to find this first piece, this first component, we're going to cover up the first column of numbers. And we're going to do multiplication on the diagonal. So we're going to start in the upper left, and we're going to do 2 times negative 3. And then we're going to subtract the other diagonal, so 3 times 1. That's going to give us our first component, or our x value, of our new, our new uh, vector. To find the second piece, or the y coordinate, we're actually going to cover up the middle uh, column of numbers. I'm going to use this because it's skinnier than my finger. And you're always going to start in the upper left. So 1 times negative 3, and it's always subtraction. 3 times 4. To find our last component, our z value, we're going to cover up the last column. And I'm going to start again in the upper left. So 1 times 1 minus 2 times 4. All we're going to do now is just simplify a little bit. No math left to do. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Minus 3, that gives me a negative 9. Here I've got negative 3 minus 12. That gives me a negative 15. And here I've got 1 minus 8 for a negative 7. Uh, the very last step to cross product, um, and as weird as this is, you kind of got to drink the Kool-Aid on this one because we don't provide you with the proof about why it happens. But in order for cross product to happen, you have to switch the sign on the middle term. So if it is negative, turn it positive. If it's positive, turn it negative. So now you're on the test and you're like, man, I have no idea if I just did that right. An easy way to check is to do the dot product. If I dot any two vectors together, the way to tell if they are orthogonal is if the answer comes out to be 0. So if I do 1 times negative 9, I'm going to get negative 9. 2 times 15 is 30. And 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. If I add all that up, I'm going to get 0. So I've created at least a vector that is orthogonal to the first one. I'm going to also double check the other vector. So 4, 1, 3, no, sorry, negative 3. I'm going to dot that with the vector I found, which is 9, 15, negative 7. So 4 times negative 9 is negative 36. 1 times 15 is 15. And negative 3 times negative 7 is 21. If I add those together, I'm also going to get a 0. So I've created a vector that is orthogonal to two vectors at the same time. We're going to do a few more cross products. I'm going to show you what it's like if you reverse the order of the vectors in the, I don't want to call it absolute value, but in the system for cross product. If you flip those, what's going to happen? And then we're going to cross a vector with itself and see what happens. So first up is u, which is 1, negative 2, 1. And we're going to cross that with v, which is 3, 1, and negative 2. So just pulling my numbers out of my linear combinations there, not really doing any math with them yet. So in order to find the first coordinate, I'm going to cover up the first column. I've got negative 2 times negative 2, which is 4. And then I've got 1 times 1, which is 3. 
oh, sorry, one times one, which is one. I'm already thinking of what the answer is gonna be. Cover up the middle column. I'm gonna get one times negative two, which is negative two, minus one times three, which is three. Last column, I'm gonna have one times one, which is one, minus negative two times three, which is negative six. So just doing a little simplifying, I've got three, negative five, and seven. Remember that at the end, you wanna switch the sign on the middle term. So it looks like my cross product for these two vectors is three, five, seven. If I reverse the two vectors and put V on top of U, covering up the first column, I'm gonna get one times one, which is one, minus negative two times negative two, which is four. Here I'm gonna get three times one, which is three, minus negative two times one, which is negative two. Last, I'm gonna get three times negative two, which is negative six, minus one times one, which is one. So a little bit of simplifying, I get three, five, negative seven. Oops, sorry, negative three right here. And then don't forget, on your middle term, you always flip the sign. So when you do a cross product and then you do the flip of that cross product, you actually end up with the exact opposite vector. So every sign should change. Numbers stay the same, but the signs change on every single number you have. So let's just say in 3D space, that vector was going like that. This one will go the exact opposite direction. Same slope, just the opposite way. When you cross a vector with itself, so three, one, negative two, whoops, that's a bad negative two. Three, one, negative two, let's cross that and see what happens. So covering up my first column, I'll get negative two minus a negative two. I'll get negative six minus negative six and I'll get three minus three. So when you uh, cross a vector with itself, you're actually gonna get the zero vector. So that's cross product today. Not really a whole lot of pre-calculus level math, really just multiplying and subtracting, but there's a lot to keep track of um, and it's very easy to lose your uh, negative signs, so keep an eye on those.